Hey everybody, welcome to another video and today we're going to be poaching quail eggs. So stay tuned for a couple tips and tricks on how to do that and get perfect results every time. All right, let's get right into it. Let's cover the controversial ingredients first, salt and vinegar. Some say use it, some say don't use it. It's not necessary. If you use vinegar, don't use too much. And if you use salt, don't use too much. Vinegar keeps your egg from feathering and salt keeps your egg slightly suspended off the bottom. But too much of either ones will actually ruin your egg and the flavor and you don't want that. So for this recipe, we just used water and a just tiny splash of vinegar so that you could see what would happen. I also had a pot of water, I mean a bowl of water with some ice in it to cool it way, way down. And then finally, a slotted spoon with a little dish and a paper towel on it. And this is going to allow me to kind of have a staging area so that I can clean up my eggs. When you're using quail eggs, you want to try to get your hands on the absolute freshest quail eggs you can. That's the number one rule when poaching eggs. And then you want to have it refrigerated. And so have your eggs cold when you're using them. And now you're going to notice when you're cutting into quail eggs that uh, the membrane under the shell is a little more firm. It's a, it's a little thicker than a regular egg. So you're going to want to use a knife very carefully with the tip and just cut the top off. What I'm doing is I'm putting it into a strainer and I'm separating your thin white from your thick white. And you're going to see why here in a second. When you do that, you're going to have a really nice clean poached egg. And so it's a very simple process. You're going to want to get your pot and on a really medium to high heat, you're going to try to get it to simmer fairly quick. Now, the idea is that if you put your egg in too soon and it's not simmering, it's not at the right temperature, your egg white is going to separate from your yolk. And so you can, you know, when you do a couple of poached eggs, you'll know very quickly, man, I should have, I should have waited a minute. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to wait till the, the bubbles start to rise to the top. And once the bubbles start to rise to the top, but it's not boiling, you're going to turn your heat down just a tiny little bit. So I wanted to show you exactly what you're looking for. And if you put a thermometer into it, you're going to be on the, on the high end of about 180, give or take. And so check this out. Notice I've, I've got bubbles, but I'm not boiling. And that's really critical because as soon as you're boiling, it's very, very aggressive. It's, if it's too hot, like if you put your egg in when it's boiling, it's just going to destroy the whole process. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to just gently cook this egg with this white and the yolk, and it's going to come together very beautifully. And that's when you get that perfectly poached egg. So notice the water. I'm not boiling, but I'm just right at a simmer. And here's where I'm going to go ahead and turn the fire down just a tiny little bit and begin the process. So we're going to do this a couple of ways. Notice I turned my fire down, my, my simmering slowed way down. I'm not, I'm not bubbling too, too much now, but I'm at that right temperature. I'm at about 178, 180. And I'm going to create a bit of a vortex right in the middle of my pot and very gently drop that egg that I just cracked. And you're going to notice that when you do it right, so you don't have to have a whirlpool, you don't have to create a tornado, just a very, a very gentle vortex. And what it's going to do, it's going to help wrap that egg white, the protein, around itself and uh, it's going to cook. Now, here's what's incredibly important. When you're cooking a, a quail egg, 40 seconds from the moment you put it in to the moment you take it out. 40 seconds is going to be about perfect. And so if you like your yolks a little more jammy, you're going to want to probably go about 45 seconds. If you like them a little more runny, then maybe 35 seconds. But this cooks incredibly quick. And uh, in a minute, I'm going to show you what it's like to do a bunch at one time. And so, you know, we're going to do a half a dozen. But truth be told, you could do 20 or 30 uh, at one time, and it's not going to make a difference. But look at that. 45 seconds, 40 seconds and we have a perfectly poached quail egg. So we're going to show you some results here in a second, but, but for now, let me crack a half a dozen into this little ramekin and, um, and show you what we're looking at uh, when you want to do multiple because, you know, truth is, if you're serving up quail eggs, poached quail eggs, uh, each person's going to probably get about four or five, uh, minimum of three because, uh, because they're so small. And so you could do little tiny eggs benedict with these with these quail eggs they just look great you're gonna go through the same process you're just gonna 
if you have some some scissors, actually they they have scissors on Amazon where you can just clip the tip right off. Those are really easy. If you don't have scissors, you can use the tip of a knife, and uh, and that's not going to be a problem either. Either. Now for these, I didn't run it through the mesh strainer, although I have it sitting right there. I didn't run it through the mesh strainer because I wanted you to see the difference between uh, just poaching them like that versus cleaning them up a little bit. And you can do this same technique for regular eggs, regular chicken eggs or duck eggs or even turkey eggs if you want a little bit bigger. The only difference is that um, is the time, obviously. Chicken eggs, I find that about two and a half minutes is perfect. So let's get back to the let's get back to the pot. And we're just gonna go ahead and dump them in one at a time. Slightly different areas. Now you can give the pot a little stir right before you dump them in. And what this is going to do, actually, if you give the pot a little stir, it's going to help move the water around. It's going to help wrap them up a little better. But notice the areas at the top. So that see that light white that's floating to the very top? That's the that's the loose white part of the egg. Now, if I would have strained it out, there's a good chance I wouldn't have had that much uh, loose white floating around, which isn't that big of a deal because after it's all said and done. Uh, and you pull it out of the water, they have a tendency to wrap quite well, and then you can go ahead and clean them up a little bit. And generally, that's what people do. When you poach an egg, you pull it out of the water, it requires a little bit of trimming, and you're going to end up with just that perfect spherical shape of a, of a poached egg. And so, after it's set just a tiny little bit, I'm going to give it a stir. Like I said, you can stir it in the beginning. And you, I put six eggs in here, but you can put 30 eggs, and it's going to give you the exact same thing. They're not going to, they're not going to combine together once you uh, once they're once they're cracked they're all going to maintain their own shape like I said same thing 40 seconds maximum 45 seconds anything over 45 seconds then your yolk is going to be set uh, a little too much and it's not going to be uh, it's not going to be runny and so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and sep separate them and at this point, this is where you can cool them down. If you do pop them in your, in your ice, wa ice bath, you can actually reserve these eggs for up to three or four days. And uh, all you gotta do to, to reheat them is plop them in boiling water for about 10 seconds. Five, 10 seconds, and you're back in business. And so for me, I'm gonna go ahead and eat them now, so I'm not necessarily needing to cool it down. But like I said, if you wanna cool it down, put it in the ice bath. Once it's cooled, you can go ahead and refrigerate it. You can actually keep it in the ice bath in the refrigerator and they'll last for five days, roughly. Notice there's some little edges right there on the eggs. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna trim those off. I'm gonna just pinch those off. There we go. And you can see right now we've got little tiny poached quail eggs is what it's gonna look like. At this point, you can go ahead and plate it up however you're gonna plate it up. They're nice and ready. They're nice and hot, ready to eat. Uh, for me, I'm gonna combine these quail eggs with a chicken egg, and I'm gonna put it over um, just a bed of hollandaise. And so what I have here is some fresh hollandaise sauce, just smeared, and some grits and cheddar cheese with some butter, some crispy bacon. Uh, right now I'm sprinkling some, some dill, and I'm gonna put a little salt and pepper right on top of that. The combination is great. And we're gonna check it out here in a second. Just, this is great. I love a poached egg. There's just an elegant quality to a nice silky poached egg. The velvety aspect of the yolk when cooked right. The whites are set perfectly. And uh, for me, this is just a, an elegant way to serve an egg. And it's incredibly delicious. So if you've never had a poached egg, give this a try. It's wonderful. It's easy. You're going to find that, uh, that poaching an egg generally comes along with a lot of apprehension because people have a tendency to just get after it and they either put the egg in too hot or too cold. But if you follow these simple steps, you know, make sure your temperature is just right, just, just about simmering. Make sure that you don't keep it in too long, 45 seconds for a quail egg, two and a half minutes for a chicken egg. And um, in the beginning, if you do use a little bit of vinegar, don't use too much. It does have a tendency to change the flavor of that natural egg, but it will help you out keeping your egg from feathering. And so. Sometimes in the beginning until you get the hang of it, 
you can use a little bit of a little, little, little bit of vinegar and then a little bit of salt. But you're going to find that once you get the hang of it, you can just poach them in regular water and you're not going to have a single problem whatsoever. Look at that. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you get an opportunity to try this. Click that logo to subscribe and check out some of our other videos, our reviews, and our different projects. We look forward to seeing you soon.